Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a Q&A video, different type of format for me, but I have been wanting to film a Q&A for quite a while and I put out a little question box on my Instagram stories for a sewing Q&A, so here we are. If you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and let's get straight on into it. So welcome, 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 welcome to my channel. If you are new here, then hello. I do sewing and craft content and today we're gonna keep it really relaxed and we're gonna do a Q&A video. So by that, I mean, I've had some questions sent in and I'm gonna answer them. And I wanna keep this really chatty and informal and you might hear a little bit of background noise because I have neighbors in the garden and this camera likes to pick up all those sort of things. So yeah, apologies in advance for that. So I got given some questions on Instagram and I'm gonna answer them. So there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just gonna go through and pick out questions and I'm gonna hopefully answer all of them. If there's anything I can't answer, then I'll say it. The first question is, what is your absolute fave Friday item? You can only choose one. So I work for Friday Pattern Company. They are my social media client. I absolutely love working for them. And you know what? It's gonna be three years in November that I've been working for them, which is just absolutely wild to think that it's been nearly three years, but I love my job so much, so grateful. And my favorite item is such a tough one because I've made a lot <laughs> over the nearly three years that I've been sewing with Friday patterns. Um, so my favorite currently has got to be the Donny Shirt X Davenport dress mashup. This was a dress that I made probably about three months ago now, and I have, worn it non-stop and I think my favourite pattern and that is the Davenport dress. I love the Donny shirt, I love the stage brush, there's so many patterns that I love from Friday that I literally make on repeat because the patterns speak for themselves but there's just something about the Davenport dress that just suits my aesthetic, it suits my body shape, it's just such a lovely sew, it comes together beautifully, I love the back yoke and how it uses the burrito method so it encloses all of those seams and it's just a, a gorgeous dress pattern and I've made it, I think, four times now, um, including the Donny Davenport mashup, which I'll, you could argue isn't technically the full Davenport, but they're just so beautiful. I love it as a pattern and my Donny Davenport mashup is my, probably my favourite Friday make at the moment. Although if you'd asked me that question in autumn, winter, I probably would have said my Arlo track jacket hack, the one with the button up. Um, because I wore it almost every day. So <laughs> yeah, I'd say that. Top tips for creating a gathered skirt on a dress. Always find this frustrating and never happy with it. So the gathered skirt hack is probably one of my go-tos. It's extremely easy and I think I'm even wearing it. Yeah, I'm pretty much wearing one now. So to create a gathered dress hack or a gathered skirt in general, most of the time, most patterns or most hacks would require just a rectangle of fabric that is gathered on the top edge and sewn into something or sewn into a waistband or sewn into elastic or something, for example, if you're making a skirt. My top tips, so number one, don't slack on the amount of rows of gathering stitches you want to make. That's fine if that's how you roll, but I would 100% do two parallel lines of stitches and sometimes even three. If the fabric is like a viscose or something really slippery, then do three layers, three rows of gathering stitches on your machine. If you don't know what a gathered stitch is, it's a stitch length that's between four and five, so quite a long stitch length and you leave the tail of the top and bobbin thread out at the start and at the end so you don't back tack at either side like you would if you were sewing any other seam. You leave them open and that way when you pull on the bobbin thread you pull it like that and you pull the fabrics and it gathers that fabric. So if you do parallel lines of stitching, I'll try and overlay some footage of me doing some so that you can see what I'm referring to. Do two or three parallel lines of gathering stitches and that way you're going to get a beautiful gathered finish and it's going to be easier to make them even and spread out the gathers um, so that they look professional. Uh, also 
when I'm doing a gathered skirt or a gathered dress hack, I like to, when, I, when I've done my gathered stitches and I'm say I'm holding the piece of rectangle like this and I've got my gathered stitches in it, for example, I will then half it, pin at that half and then half it again and pin the quarters. And then when I'm putting it to a dress, I'll do the same thing. So I know that the side seams of the rectangle are gonna match with the side seams, but then I'll half it and then I'll quarter it. And then I know those pin points are all going to match up and then all I have to do then is distribute the gathers between those small sections rather than the entire section in one. If you would like a video purely on my gathering top tips, because I, where I've been sewing for so long I forget sometimes that these skills are something that I've practiced, so if you would like a video on like a beginner friendly gathering top tips then let me know. How do you find time to sew? Good question so I get asked this quite a lot and I think from an outside perspective it must look like on my social media channels and stuff like that that I sew a lot and although I do um, it's my job and it's why I tend to make a lot of Friday patterns because I have the the luxury and I'm super grateful that I love Friday patterns when I got a job for Friday I was already sewing Friday patterns so it kind of was just like a match made in heaven and a lot of the sewing, sewing I do is to create content for Friday's channels and sometimes there's a little bit of crossover on what I share here but most of the time it is for Friday's blog and stuff like that and then things that I make sort of for my own channel and for my own content that I make time for is because I work three days a week, two of which are for Friday and one of the days is for ad hoc content, other client work ads and things that I do for YouTube and then any other extra time within that day is for sewing. So for example today after I film this video I'm going to go work on the Minerva Ambassador project and film a video. So that's kind of how I get time to do it and then in the summer months I find it a lot easier but I'll come out to my studio in the evening and I'll do like half an hour, an hour after Willow's gone to bed so that I can do a little bit of sewing but that's the sort of projects like at the moment I'm making a, um, an Arlo track jacket for my mum and it's been in the works for the, since January, sorry mum. <laughs> um, but they're the sort of projects that, because it's not work related, I struggle to find time for. So it may come across that I find a lot of time, but it's because it's always work related. Whereas if it's a personal project like that for my mum, or I'm making something for a friend, or I'm making something for Willow, the work in progress is WIPs sit in a pile for ages like I've got a basket behind me with two projects that I've cut out to make for Willow and I've not had time to make them and it's getting to the point where she's going to grow out of that size so peaks and troughs but yeah hopefully that answers that so next question bias binding or facings do you know what I'm actually verging towards the more bias binding because I've started to use bias binding a lot more this year and I've been making my own bias binding from matching fabrics that I'm using for the garment. And it's so easy and actually I think I kind of prefer it. For example, I'm wearing the this dress. This is the indigo dress from Tilly and the Buttons and I hacked it to have a square neckline and puff sleeves. But it's got a facing. This is the facing. And it irritates the heck out of me because it always comes up when you wash it. When you wash things with facings, they always go like this. And it's so difficult to get them to lay flat. And I'm not the best at making time to iron garments after I've washed them. You can probably tell by my social media because <laughs> everything's creased. Um, so yeah, I'm, I prefer a bias binding. When it's done, when it's done right, it looks seamless and actually it's so much easier to wash. Tips for tackling blazers, they scare me, so I've never made one. So, outerwear in general can be quite intimidating when you go from, say, sewing dresses and skirts and sort of relatively easier garments to something like an outerwear piece, like a jacket. And understandably, because it's like, oh gosh, it looks so wild. The sewing steps, a lot of the time, are broken down into easier to digest chunks. So my top tip for this would be make a toile. So get a fabric that you don't care about, whether it be an old bed sheet, and practice. So something that you don't care about, don't go straight into cutting out your beautiful fabric and hoping that it's all going to come together okay, because sometimes mistakes happen. I am a, I know this from experience, when I made a raincoat, I did the zipper on the wrong side, and all this other stuff. So things can happen when you're making that go wrong, and it's okay to make mistakes. That's literally how we learn to better it next time, and I've made so many over the years. So work on a piece of fabric and twirl the pattern first 
Second of which, the Friday Pattern Company Heather Blazer is a great blazer to start with because it's not tailored. You don't have to fit it to your body and there's no fussy darts or fastenings. It's honestly ideal. Yes, it's lined, plus there's a video so along. So if you're a visual learner, that's really great. And yeah, I think start with some really simple outerwear patterns like the Heather, like the Ilford jacket and those kind of things and then practice, practice on scrap fabrics. How to start sewing? Good question, I get asked this a lot um, and it's so nice to know that I have an audience of people that aren't sewists but they want to become sewists after seeing what I'm making and that's really really cool, that's all I've like ever wanted is to get people into creativity and sewing. And I have a blog post, it's a little bit older now, so I might go in and um, make an updated one, but it's um, how to start sewing, it's how to start garment sewing, and it's a whole blog post that goes more in depth on this subject. If you are unsure about sewing, but you really wanna try and just see if it's for you, but you don't wanna spend over 100 pounds on a sewing machine, ask your friends and family, does anyone that you know, your nan, your, your parents, your um, friends, your siblings, whatever, does anyone have a sewing machine that you could just go around and borrow or take it home with you for a week and just give it a try? Um, and then you can see if it's for you or not. Because often, you know, it's okay to start a hobby and then decide that it's not for you. That's absolutely fine. I do it all the time. Do you enjoy it? Then in the blog post, I've got a few kind of little details about how to choose the right sewing machine for you and all of that kind of stuff. Fave Pattern Company, except for Friday Pattern Company, OBS. That's really funny. So yeah, I know I sew a lot of Friday, but I've explained why, it's my job. Um, so my favorite pattern and other than Friday Pattern Company, I feel like this is also an obvious answer, but it's probably Tilly and the Buttons because they're the reason that I started up sewing again in 2019 because I modeled for the Indigo pattern. So um, because I modeled for them, and it just sparked this desire in me because I did fashion textiles in college um, and I just kind of, my sewing machine was just living in the cupboard and I'd get it out every now and again for random things. But I was like, why aren't I making my own clothes? And it's because of Tilly and the Buttons. So I have a lot to thank for them for getting that spark in me. And I love their patterns. They're just very, very beginner friendly and quite straightforward patterns, but they're also really cute. What are your fave three tips for sewing? Oh gosh, um, my fave three tips the post-it note tip, which is on my Instagram reels, is a good one. I always have a packet of post-it notes next to my machine and it, they're amazing for sewing straps and like little things. If you find, you know when you start a stitch on a seam and it, your machine sucks up the fabric and you're like, why is it doing that? It's often because it's too close to an edge or it's um, too too narrow of a seam and the machine just sucks it in so a really good tip to stop that is to put your piece of fabric on a bit of post-it note because look they're so sticky that you can lay it on and it gives you a little bit of extra um surface le surface level to work with and then you just tear it away because it's paper you just tear it away from the stitch so go watch my videos of that on the post-it note hacks because it shows it in obviously more of a visual detail getting a cutting mat for cutting and a rotary cutter has changed my life. I, I do tend to still mainly use scissors to cut out my projects, but if I've got small pieces and there's a lot of them in a particular pattern, I'll use my cutter, my, uh, my rotary cutter and my cutting mat. just makes life so much faster. And always have your arm picker or your uh, seam ripper, whatever you want to call it, on hand because often you'll need it and also you need it for things like but opening buttonholes and stuff like that anyway, so I always have one handy. This leads me on to my next question, which is favorite tool. My favorite tool is probably my sewing machine. It's cost me a lot of money and I love it and I don't know what I'd do without it. So, but then if we're talking tools, like other tools, then probably, probably my unpicker, I'm not gonna lie. The tools you thought you wouldn't use, but actually love. Probably my clips. I'm not a massive fan of clips. I'm I'm more a pin gal. It's either you know you either team pin or team clip, and I'm a bit of both. But I I did feel like maybe I wouldn't use clips. I just got them to have them handy, and I I've started using them a lot more actually. Another thing, I don't know what I thought I wouldn't have used. Usually, if I buy something, I'm buying it with purpose. I don't tend to buy sewing tools for the sake of it. But I would say one of the things that has been so handy is a magnetic pin dish because I had a pin cushion and it was really annoying 
um, pins used to get everywhere whereas now I can use this and I can scoop up the pins off the side and um, they will just stick to the magnet so yeah love it also I have an Amazon shop with a lot of the sewing tools and things that I use so I'll link that below for you guys um, if you're wondering and I've added like loads of things in there that I use myself and then another one is show us your fabric stash <laughs> If I showed you my fabric stash, this video would be about two hours long, so I'm going to save that for another video. If anyone would like to see my fabric stash, let me know. I have also considered doing a D stash and selling loads. I hoard fabrics, and if I, I saw a really funny, funny meme, meme the other day, and it was like, um, this is how fast I'd have to sew if I wanted to sew all the all the projects that I want that I had ideas for for summer. They obviously worded it a lot better than that, but this is my brain. So it was like this person who going like sewing really, really fast. And it was because you're never gonna have enough time to sew all the fabrics and all the projects that you wanna sew. But that just made me laugh. So yeah, I have a lot of fabrics. Last question then is, can you knit? And if yes, how did you learn as I'm finding it so difficult? So the answer is yes, but a loose yes. <laughs> I can knit. I can knit and I can purl in a straight line. I have attempted to follow a pattern and it didn't go well. So the only things I've ever finished that were kind of a pattern were some little boots for Willow. I, I genuinely cried when I finished these because it was the first time I'd ever followed a pattern that wasn't a straight scarf. <laughs> and I was so happy that I managed to make them for my, my for my daughter and yeah it was just an emotional time so yeah the little boots and also I tried to do a we are knitters I think it is um like a vest and it's like a loose knitted vest with some really chunky needles and I got like halfway through the first vest in lockdown and just never finished it so that has been a work in progress that has been in my my like storeroom for a while and it stares me in the face every time I go in there. So the answer is yes I can knit but I do not practice. I do not actively practice the skill. That is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this sewing Q&A. If anything sparked your imagination or if you thought of any video video ideas that you'd like to see following this Q&A then please let me know because I love hearing your suggestions and I usually try my best to work on those suggestions for you as well because you guys make this community what it is and I love you for that, I love you for watching my videos so thank you so much. If you haven't already please hit that subscribe button, I'm trying to get us to 100k, that would just be the dream. So yeah, thank you so much, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time, bye!